at the end of the day, you're going to have to have access to Linux in some degree or another as you become a hacker, but you don't have to run Linux as your base operating system. Let's break down what that means and why it's important. So from time to time I get asked, what operating system do I use, which seems to spin off some sort of intention behind it as to what that means for me as a hacker. And it's kind of a frustrating question because, you know, I use everything. I have macOS for my work machine, I have a Linux server to my left, I'm recording this on a Windows machine. I have different machines for different intentions and that works best. The more important thing is knowing how to harden those systems and knowing how to use those systems to the best of your advantage. So as you grow as a hacker, you're going to need to settle somewhere. And unfortunately for a lot of people, what that kind of leads to is Linux distro hopping or kind of latching onto Kali Linux and staying there. And don't get me wrong, Kali Linux is a tool with a specific purpose. As I view Kali Linux, it's a pre-built distribution, not meant for running as your base operating system, but to use in a virtual machine with a whole host of hacking tools in it. I used to use it if I was going on site as a pen tester, because I knew I was taking a complete-ish kit with me. There's other variants of those operating systems, such as Parrot OS. They have the same intention, but they don't have the same curation process. Offensive security is very careful with what goes into their operating system, I can't say the same for those others, and I kind of look at those as a bit more of a toy, something that people play in, but not something that if you're really serious about this, that you're going to stay with for long. What I think you should be trying to do is to understand what you're using and why, not just grabbing a tool and leveraging it. And what I mean by that is you're using Kali Linux because you need access to Linux. That doesn't mean you necessarily run it as your base operating system. What you should ideally as a hacker do is contain the environment you're testing within. So by that I mean you run a VPS and you remotely connect to a machine or you run a virtual machine. My preference depends on what I'm doing. When I was a pen tester I used to use virtual machines. Ideally the reason for that was that I could take a snapshot before I went to a customer's on-site location do the work on site, deliver the report, and then roll that snapshot back. That meant that when I went to another customer engagement, I had no bleed over of data between the two. When I was doing bug bounty testing, I did everything I could do in a VPS because that meant that my home network wasn't at risk of an Akami ban. That's not fun to explain to anyone in the household. But while you're learning and assuming that you're a beginner because this is a beginner's video, my recommendation would be get Kali Linux so you get a foundation in Linux and learn to run it in a virtual machine. The reason you don't run it as your base operating system is that you're taking an operating system then that runs with root privileges, has a whole host of hacking tools that you don't yet understand, and you're putting that as your main machine. You're not going to be able to secure that, you're not going to be able to harden that because you just don't have the knowledge yet. As you grow and you want to explore other distributions, you can pick up from there Ubuntu. and. My recommendation as you grow into Linux and you're trying to explore it isn't to keep distro hopping. My recommendation is to learn what goes into that distro. Before you go from Ubuntu to Arch or some other system, try changing the window manager. Try configuring the terminal. I, I get asked very often, why does my terminal look this way? Try doing it. Try replicating it. See what it takes. It, it's a pretty short process. and learning how to configure your system but also how to harden your system. As you learn what breaks different components remotely in a hack, learn what it takes to harden them. It's a really good exercise to learn these various bug classes by example. You can exploit it, patch it, try and re-exploit it and understand mitigations and why they are how they are. And given that this is a bug bounty orientated video, Try setting up a system where you've got a virtual machine and you've got a VPS and how do they interact? A VPS is essentially a Linux machine you just put up in the cloud, you configure it and you connect to it with SSH keys. In the FFUF video, you'll see I've got examples using a VPS at the end to give you a quick primer of what that looks like. And starting to get a workflow together where you're not entirely dependent on your own machine but your remote machine, which is really useful if you're in a high latency environment. If you're in a location that's really high latency, you can put a VPS in San Francisco, which is usually the shortest path to a lot of companies that you're testing on, and you're not going to experience that latency anymore. 
And there's a really good application called Mosh that'll help reduce that input lag that you experience. So all of that to say, try and buck against the existing advice of you've got to use Kali Linux, you've got to do that. It, it's not very good advice. It's usually not foundation in a good hacker's arsenal. A good hacker will tell you, look, it's important you understand Linux. And the caveat to that is most authors are writing for Linux. It's the predominant operating system of choice. It's got flexibility to it. It's stable. And so the tools that you're going to use are primarily written for Linux. A lot of them will, you know, with the prevalence of languages like Golang and Burp sweeping in Java and cross-platform, you can get, run a lot natively on Windows, but sooner or later you're going to hit barriers where you want a Linux system. So, learn Linux, but don't feel pressured to run it as your daily driver. You're a beginner after all, if you're watching this, and you should take that into consideration of not trying to overwhelm yourself with everything at once. You might put yourself off if you force yourself to use Linux all the time, and then something you enjoy doing is no longer possible. You could dual boot to get around that, or you could run it in a virtual machine. And one of the other added benefits of doing that is that snapshot I was talking about before, you could snapshot your system, explore another display manager or explore some more extreme configurations. And if you don't like it, you can just roll back the snapshot. You've absolutely lost nothing in doing that, but you've gained knowledge. So there's a whole world there to explore. It's more about how you explore it. You don't have to explore it with jumping in and forcing a daily driver, and that actually builds bad habits. Try and explore it with virtual machines or VPSs or some sort of remote setup. And you know, ideally, if you do that and you get comfortable with that, you're going to learn the foundations of Linux, not just a Linux setup and a Linux distribution. Understand what goes in and what goes together, which ideally is what makes you the best hacker possible. Being a hacker, is understanding not just breaking as a quick plug at the end here too if you want to get started i'm at the moment in the process of setting up myself a schedule for twitch one of the things that i'd like to stream is how do you get started in a vps as well as how do you get started with a virtual machine so not sure when i'm going to do that but come and follow me on twitch and i'll hopefully cover that in the next couple of months